morning, good day. We're showing you some telephonesis in the sky, proven. You've seen the part of this video, or maybe you've seen a lot of this video. What we this is how this video is going to go. We're going to show you what's in the sky. Uh, we're glad to now release it to the world. Is this idea of teslaphoresis, which is a discovery we made several years ago, and we've been developing it. My story goes, I put the video up showing this line in the sky with these nodules on it. And as that guy was just showing you in that college, Rice College, that object light up. And what it is, is connectivity system to light up everything away from it, like a force field with power in it. Okay, let them explain it. It's better than that. But anyway, someone ironically sent me this they saw in the sky, which looks a lot like what we just watched. So keep watching, keep listening. It gets interesting. And Tesla Phoresis is the simplest way to understand it is self-assembly at a distance, just long-distance assembly of, of materials. And what we did was, uh, because we're at Rice, we had plenty of nanotubes around, so we uh, decided to use nanotubes. And what we discovered was that these nanotubes can actually string together and form wires by themselves under this electric field. This fundamental idea of uh, force acting at a distance, that you can have, instead of, you know, when you normally build circuits and things like that, you have to have physical contact. Now we're talking about building circuits without actually touching them. All right, we're just dispersing this. Power on, and up. I realized that a Tesla coil could actually do this if you designed it in a way to create a very strong force field in front of it. And so that was the engineering aspect of it. And then once I designed the machine, then all sorts of discoveries started falling out of it. Oh, that was a good one. Tesla Phoresis is one of those things, it's a project that there are just so many avenues, so many things that I think you can do with it. Not just making conductive wires, but taking it in so many different places, not only just biomedical and engineering, and, but taking Here's another picture sent to me yesterday. I had two of these like this yesterday. So are they experimenting in our skies on Tesla Thiesis? Thiesis? Are they experimenting on our skies to see if they could run communications? If they could add free power to our lives? If you like this video, um, I ask you to put a thumbs up on it, share it with two friends. Uh, there's more to come, and I'm going to show you uh, what I recorded. And now with a new light on it, tell me what you think that cord in the sky is on comments. Thank you. It into different industries like silicone chips or um, exploring different conductive materials. This also ties in just generally in nanotechnology that self-assembly is very big. That is, if you can get things to build themselves, just as... In biology, we build ourselves. When my son saw it, he called them webs. He thought it was like Spider-Man shooting webs out. And it really is. It's very much like a web sort of stringing out together. And that was a surprising finding. And the physics of that is actually a, a lot richer than what we had originally thought. So there is new science coming out of this as we go. First thing I thought was, this is a hair. And I said, no, it ends right there. I don't know what it is. It's not through a window, it's not through a screen. So then I started seeing these little black dots. Here's a telephone pole. Here's number one. You get another one. Now, if there's only two, I would say that might be bugs. But no, there's another one. There's a little tiny one right there. 
In the end of this, what I thought might have been a hair or a piece of wire on a screen, it's not. Because notice the, um, the noise, which is a choppy looking stuff. Notice it around here, it's still noise. It ain't overlaying the noise. There's another UAP right there, maybe a small one right there. Another one, another one. And I started thinking, wow, there's a lot of UAPs right here. So let's follow this cord. Let's follow it from the start. Definitely something's around it. Are they, are they, are these are energy? Are they getting energy from this cord? I don't know. I don't know. But there you go. And in and out of the clouds, which is pretty amazing. So it's not overlaid on a screen or a door or a window. Then there's some kind of junction here. Maybe this is where the ships come in. I'm just using my imagination. But you know, there's no telling what really this is. Um, I bring my exposure all the way down. Now I'm, I'm running right now 2K. Let's go up to 6K. Okay, let's look at it now. And remember, you got these big dark sources. This is not just a storm cloud. Let's run. Let's take some of the noise out. Okay. Noise. When I say noise, what am I talking about? This splotchy stuff. There's not a lot of it. So you see how this, this line runs through the clouds? That's a dead giveaway that it's not like a hair or something on the lens. So there, we settle that, and the rest of the stuff is just mind-blowing. I'm gonna turn the light up on it and see what we really got. Well, Now look at that thing. There's something right there. There's something right here connecting it. I don't know, folks. You tell me what we're looking at. It's a crazy sky nowadays. I brought the contrast some down and I'm gonna bring the shadows up a little bit. So you'll see more of the outline of stuff. Pretty amazing stuff people are finding out there. I'm bring the highlights all the way down. See what I get. Too far down. You get all these different UAPs all around this thing. You know, who knows how far this thing goes into that cloud, too. Pretty insane, right? All right, comment, like, and if you find something similar that you think, you know, Chris needs to blow this up.